Right, and delighted to say Keith Wood is with us. Keith, good morning to you. How are you? Good morning. I'm very good. Thank you. Very good form. I was going to say, it's... Um, we don't really know how to do these uh, post-match analysis where Munster have done everything that they're supposed to do and come away with all of the spoils. They did. They came away with the spoils. Um, it was a fantastic match, fantastic occasion. Um, Nerve-wracking, really. Um, the way finals are supposed to be, I think. And and to see them coming out at the end and coming out in that fashion, um, which was you know getting a score that... Um, that pretty much incorporated all the players for Hodden to score in the corner, which was pretty fantastic. And then to see the touchline conversion, which like every single part of that worked well. Uh, where, where in the season, as we look back at the various turning points, where did this come from? Do you think? Um, it's, it's very hard. Not, look, doing a retrospective, it's very hard not to be retrospective. But um, the. Uh, I think an awful lot of it came from even the losing the games at the very start. I think it was the recognition that um, that the uh, the backroom staff and Graham Rowntree had that the, the team weren't fit enough to play the style that they wanted to play, and they ended up having a much longer preseason. Um, and they they pretty much gave up the first few matches. Now I still think they expected to win those games. There were games they they should have won and and couldn't get it right, but. Uh, I think the players were pretty much flat at the start of the season for the first three or four games, um, partly because of that level of training. But I think it's paid off at the end. And um, I thought that was going to put them under too much pressure for them to qualify for Europe next year, for them to get into the um, knockout stages for the URC. And then they jogged their way back from it. And I do, I know I was listening to you just before the break, and I do think that that South African game in Porky Cueve was um, was something else again. I think it was an opportunity for uh, for Roundtree to really pick um, young Munster players and uh, and get them onto the field on a on a very pressurised situation that isn't that pressurised because nobody expected anything from them. Um, that they then performed so well, which was brilliant, and I think it gave an extra fillip to the to the more senior players that there actually was strength and depth that there you could rely on different guys. Um, and if you know, if I was to 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 be really impressed by anything this year, and I have been impressed by all the coaches and Leamy coming in and Prendergast, and, and that's fantastic. We can talk about those again. Um, but I actually think the selection was different this year. Um, um, I don't know to what level of pressure the IRFU put teams uh, under in their selection. I know that they have an influence. They just didn't seem to have much of an influence with Munster this year. And, and it looked like Roundtree picked whoever it is he wanted to pick. Um, and he didn't... Uh, he didn't rest on anybody's reputation. He picked players that he thought would do a job for him. And he, I think he's invested in youth. And I know they talked about the thousands that went down there. There is a reaction, a palpable reaction, um, irrespective of the result, but now enhanced by the result, that that this is this is a monster team that, um, that supporters can follow that it had drifted away from what it was for a good few years and now it seems to be coming back to something and that doesn't isn't a guarantee of success and it's 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 uh, you know it's it's still early days but it's early days with a trophy in the cabinet and that's pretty fantastic so for me i look back in the season to a huge level of surprise that they've got silverware um huge joy that they have and a huge joy for some of the players that have played that are, are now holding a trophy and have a trophy at the end of their careers which is pretty astounding you know and and it's a great launching pad for all the new guys that are there John Hodnett is a name you mentioned already there Keith and, and uh, there's just some moments where he makes the big carry early on wins a penalty just after that that first try from Stormers as well and the try that you mentioned uh, not to mention his, his interview afterwards as well he was just brilliant yeah, look, uh, Hodnett for, for me has has got progressively better all along. He was, I mean, I, look, we were talking on this a couple of years ago when he came on the scene and we were saying, come on, get him in, get him in. And then he picked up a couple of fairly long injuries, which 
um, which kind of uh, stalled the ball there for him. And his game when he came back for me was was of an excellent standard but limited. And it's grown as the season has gone along. And he has offered more consistently when he's played. Um, but his aggression um, in the tackle has been essential. Um, that low slung back row forward um, is uh, and, 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 and the impact that he has and the running that he has. And the, I have to say the sort of... Uh, almost the, the clarity of being in the right place at the right time. I think the fitness as well is there. So he has, which has been a great joy, is he's played his best rugby in the last couple of months. You know, that's, so it's it's coming to the standard that you'd want it to be at the end of the season. A lot of guys are wrecked at the end of the season. And, um, and I think in times past, Munster were pretty wrecked at the end of the season and they didn't look it. Um, and they were, pinned to their collar for a lot of that game um, and look you have to just be thrilled for him because he's now putting his hand up and I don't think you'd have said that even at the start of the season um, to, to just briefly go back to like staging posts along the way I know it's a one-off game against South Africa and it kind of in itself doesn't really matter or mean anything but they sold out Parky Cueve and it felt like it was kind of a reactivation or a reanimation of a fan base because it was something unusual. And it was it just a, like, it, I don't know. Your, your point about the Van Graan era and how maybe the team and the fans weren't fully aligned with what everybody was trying to achieve or there was just a, a bit of a blockage, it begins to flow away after that. And even just getting Leamy and Prendergast back, they're all little very important tokens but like uh, it's it's people who've gone off and done things the hard way and not just been given a job because oh you're a local former player who we're going to um, try and build up over the next few seasons so they've they've done this in, in uh, all these little different bits seem to add together to a whole that then is actually greater than the sum of its parts I do and I don't think it's a finished product by any stretch of the imagination and that's the other piece that's that's um, that's very encouraging is that um, a lot of things went wrong this season. Um, but if I go on to the Porky Cueve match, Munster's history, uh, and I'm not saying that the other provinces don't attach more or as much importance to their history, but Munster, it just seems to be um, folded in entirely that the matches against international teams are the ones that are remembered in history. And... Um, and I can remember as a kid going to um, Monster All Blacks in 89 down in Cork and it being the most astounding game to go and watch. And, um, you know, and being involved in a game there then against Australia three years later, I was on the bench three years later. And these were huge days and they kind of reignited that element of it being something else. So yeah, I think it was great to have it back, um, have one of those international games back. To have it in Porky Cueve was phenomenal. And um, look, there is a uh, big investment in Cork. Um, there is a big investment around the province to try and, and, and bring up the structures higher. It's, it's, it's still at the start of that process and um, it'll take a period of time. But I think Cork has been a bit disengaged. Um, uh, because of being based in Limerick and I think it did need to be based somewhere and it did need an upgrade of all its facilities but now it's going to be upgraded across the board which is important um, but to have it in Cork and to have that many people there is it was phenomenal and it's something that has to be viewed again and again and again because in not doing it there's a gap so um, I think that did kickstart an awful lot, but I also think a lot of the players responded incredibly well. And, and um, on that particular day, for me, it was a day that uh, Ben Healy came out of his shell. Um, I thought he played incredibly well. Um, and for me, that's one of the, the few kind of downsides is that it didn't quite um, kick on to him playing a huge amount for Munster. And he has only in the last period of time. And actually, I love his comments over the weekend that he is delighted that he's he's spent his time and he's he's had the the uh, a medal at the end of it and he was very gracious with it um but he heads off to play for Scotland you know and 
Notwithstanding any of that, we have to take some pride in that idea as well. And he's 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 an international player now, but. Um, um, I do think that could have been a really interesting battle for Munster for the next few years. And and actually, the way Graham Rowntree managed it, it wasn't a battle. It was complimentary to both himself and Jack Crowley. Um, and I thought Crowley was fantastic. That's the best game he's played for Munster, which, which is in a final, which is phenomenal. Well, let's just talk about that because a bit of pressure on him, you suspect, after last week. Just to, And I'm sure he's not thinking about the Ireland thing at all, but actually he has... It seems certainly he would have catapulted ahead of Ross Byrne on the basis of what we've seen in the last couple of weeks. Well, what, what I've liked and disliked ab- about Crowley uh, was, um, like he got his chance, his chance, um, and then it's hard to argue against Roundtree. He's kind of managed the players very well, but he he was there as one of the guys on the line for the for the. Um, for the World Cup, he had to have been because he's, you know, he's one of these young talents. And then he gets picked at 12 for a lot of the games that he starts with Monster, and that's quite hard, but it gets him in maybe without the pressure. And um, I do like that idea of having a player on the field that doesn't have to be the pivot. And I think that has managed to work very well. Um, but in the last few weeks, and then when he did start at 10, I felt he was too deep. Um, consistently too deep which is very understandable because of the pressure that you're under you want to have enough time to make the right decision to get the ball through your hands comfortably you know to the place to where you wanted to go to um, and but in the last couple of weeks again how he's been managed being picked and not being picked and coming off the bench and playing in the centre and a whole variety of different elements um he hasn't. He seems to have grown, and it hasn't detracted from him in any way, shape, or form. Whatever job he's been asked to do, he just seems to have got a little bit better. I think the drop goal a couple of weeks ago has given him the courage to to maybe take a couple of more risks, and maybe the coaches have have given him that uh, allowance to be able to do it. But I didn't think he was as deep in this game, and he's far more of a threat. And he's a fine footballer. But he looked calm and it's quite amazing to have that sort of situation. We were talking about Ron Nogara and La Rochelle last week, that a lot of the players there seem to be very calm. But I thought Crowley was calm and um, and without even thinking about it, there was a bit of a guarantee of a grasping of the mantle when he took that final kick, that conversion of Hodnett's try. I just... I don't know what I wasn't thinking, but I just presumed it would be Healy would get yeah. that one. And and it wasn't, and it didn't seem to be up for discussion. And it isn't that he took it, it's that he absolutely nailed it. Yeah. And so they're all huge positives. And um uh, and again, doing those in the finals with the sense of calm is pretty astounding. Uh, Keith, I know this is a very difficult thing to quantify, but h- how much will the build-up and some of the things said and done in the build-up have played into Munster's hands? I mean, the like, so we're going to f you up. Well, basically, the video, of course, from the Stormers' dre- uh, um, VIP lounge, I think it was, celebrating uh, Munster beating Leinster in the semi, and also the, the, this talk of Munster being in bonus territory. I think Jean Klein mentioned it and uh, referred to it in a pre-match press conference that you know they're not there just to make up the numbers and be happy with the final. So, how much will that have helped? A lot of matches are bonus territory. Finals aren't. And I have to say, I think the pressure that was on Monster was pretty astounding because of um, the failure to perform in semis and finals over the last number of years. Um, and so I think the pressure was on Monster. I, don't, I, I actually, I know the I know the comment about being a bonus territory is was considered to be a bit patronising by by the players and the management and they weren't feeling it in that fashion but irrespective of that idea I actually think it was the total opposite I think the pressure was actually on Munster to to, to go out and deliver um, and so for me the most gratifying thing to watch was the pressure was on Munster um, uh, Anton Frisch made an un- uncharacteristic hash of a pass don't shovel shit is the, st- is the story when when you're tackled and you're falling you don't continue doing what you were going to do and there was no panic from Munster and there was a, a composure for the whole game you know and so for that you know I think I think they took what was said about them and they used it exactly the way they should use it and um, that bit of bitterness there's no harm in that at all and um 
no, it's not something, it's something that can work from time to time, but it doesn't work all the time. So, um, but we you take absolutely everything you can to get a result, you know, so if it's perceived uh, disrespect or whatever you want to do or actual disrespect, use whatever you have, whatever tools you can put into the into the toolbox to get the job done. And I think that was done. Can we get some um, specific thoughts on the, the front row? Because we've been told that Munster are going to win nothing until they beef up their front row. They need world class injection of talent. And uh, they managed to go away to a, a fever pitch Cape Town against a storied South African scrummaging team on a bad pitch and hold their own um, I thought the front row did incredibly well um, there, there weren't colossal number of scrums um, they were under pressure but they were fine with the pressure I thought they were a little bit lower than they have been which is essential against South African teams and especially when the ground is poor um, everything can collapse and collapse easily um, I still think they need to improve and um, and that's fine because there's been a change there's tried to be a change there for a long period of time and it's taking its time more so in the front row than anywhere else and there is a bit of a dirt to front row forward so uh, I, 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 they did far better than the past I can tell you that and they'll be thrilled to bits because when you're playing against teams that are bigger and stronger and have that history of it it's be quite a terrifying place to go and get any result and the result for for the front row was um, proving a platform i have to say as well that i'm going to go back to fitness the fact that the ball was moved as well as it was and i've been critical of archer often because he tends to give away an awful lot of penalties um i thought he had a fantastic game and um, and I love that fact that um, he, I think he's fitter as well, but I also think, I think the importance of the day didn't affect the players. It helped them and enhanced them. I've, I've one so last I one. Thinking, sorry, go on. Uh, Queenie's been talking about John Klein's form for months, saying that he must be in the Ireland selectors' uh, thought at this stage, and there's been no sign of it. But the extended squad is named this week. Um, has he reached a point now where... You'd have to be thinking about him at least. Like the improvement has been so significant that if if you know if he could actually have the extra improvement with the extra coaching at Ireland, then maybe he might be an option for them for the World Cup. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, I think he has limited his, uh, some of his errors by not doing certain things. And um, and even if that sounds a bit negative, it isn't negative. I used to describe Jason Leonard as one of the, the best forwards of all time because what he did, he did better than anybody else. But it was the things he didn't do. He didn't try and pass the ball too much. He never tried to pop pass. He never tried to, to be a handler in any way, shape or form because he wasn't any good at it. And um, um, I think Klein, for me, has stopped doing as much of that um, because it puts him under more pressure. And but what every, every team needs is a guy who's willing to do all the grunt work and the really heavy lifting. And he has done an awful lot of that this year. And so whether that's something that Ireland will say is useful, and I think it is useful, actually, um, I think it is something that's important. But if you want every single player to be able to do every single thing, then I don't think he gets into the squad. But on the basis of what he's actually able to consistently do and do really well, um, I think he's a guy you can rely on. Okay, so it'll be up to them to decide what what yeah. they what role that's going to be. Um, one last thing, then, like the the squad's going to be named. They'll have a couple of weeks' holidays. They'll they'll be back very soon, and then it's all World Cup all the time between now and whenever we exit the World Cup at whatever stage that might be. Um, last week, after uh, Leinster being beaten by La Rochelle, did I, I I did not feel particularly happy about where we were, but I feel much better now about the fact that there's going to be an influx of players who've. Just just won a big game away from home who'll be swanning around the place and training rubbing it in their Leicester teammates faces for at least the first few days and just bringing a little bit of extra spice a little bit of extra competition to it really like fever pitch competition for uh, the 10 spot um, if Sexton doesn't make it if Sexton does make it for the backup for game time and all of a sudden I just feel a little bit better about life well look I think um, Monster have to celebrate it 
firstly um it's been a long time without it without a trophy and um and they do need to celebrate it and i think that that's very important um i think a lot of the writing off of ireland after leinster's loss last weekend is, is was wrong and off the mark um and i do think it they need the break all these guys need the break of this constant talk about rugby and about world cup because once they come back into camp it's about getting back into this idea of delivery and you know the pressure that that goes goes with it but i go back four years ago and say that the players going into camp at that time were tired were tired of the season that they'd had were tired of some of the losses that they'd had um, and it was at pretty much at the end of the tenure, um, and I think they had realised that they were they were kind of they were wrecked almost, you know. And so they didn't go into the World Cup buoyant. I think this year you have a Grand Slam under your belt. Munster have won the first trophy for a while. Leinster will have to to lick their wounds a little, but like Leinster had an extraordinary season that just just didn't work at the very end you know um they're gonna have to get over that pretty quickly yeah. and but i think those players have the capacity for me the biggest bonus is that um and for ireland is that uh when i looked at the game last weekend the stormers played in the final the stormers are a really fine team but they played a conservative style of play pretty much the manner in which Munster have played for five years in semis and finals and Munster were the ones who were trying to move the ball that's unbelievably important for Ireland because it means you have more strength and depth with players that are more comfortable um, playing with the ball and you have a long period of time with with your coaching panel with, with Andy Farrell and, and his coaches to try and bring that to the next level for a World Cup I find that pretty exciting Alright Keith we'll leave it there good stuff thanks a million Cheers, gents. It's uh, Keith Wood giving us a reaction to a massive, massive victory for Munster and for Irish rugby at the weekend against Stormers.